Welcome to Optimize 24, the thought leadership event for Aspen Tech. Joining us today is Suresh Kota, who is the Chief Information Officer at SMUD. Suresh, welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's great to have you here as well. If I may just start by asking, asking you, could you uh, sum up your role at, at SMUD and also give, give the viewers of this broadcast a bit of flavor of what SMUD is about as a company? Sure. Smart Sacramento Municipal Utility District is a vertically integrated utility. We are based in Sacramento, Sacramento County. We serve all the customers and the community in the Sacramento County, serving about 1.8 million people and 900 square miles service territory. When I say vertically integrated utility, we have the generation, transmission, distribution, and the last mile serving our customers and we interface with directly with the customer. From a, my role perspective, we have both the IT information technology that is from the desktop to data center, as well as the operational technologies that is anything to deal with the real time systems in terms of whether it is operating the power plants, wide area network communications, as well as the smart meters that goes to up to each individual homes reading up the meter to cash. And I think in terms of uh, the journey forward for SMUD, Give us a give us a, a color, a, a bit of a flavor on SMUD's own clean energy goals and its transition and sustainability goals uh, for the near term. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a very ambitious decarbonization goal uh, that is to be to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions from our power portfolio power portfolio by 2030. What we we developed a roadmap towards that goal called 2030 Zero Carbon Plan. And there are two guardrails that are the tenants of the plan is the affordability and reliability. So it's not at any cost. And there are five key areas or the pillars what we consist of this that makes up this zero carbon plan. The, that is all the way from the generation, the natural gas generation repurposing. Today we have about five natural gas power plants that are very reliable and provide a low cost energy 24 by seven. So we are very much focused on reimagining those power plants to eliminate the greenhouse gas emissions, either by replacement, retooling, or using the clean energy fuels. And the second component of the plan is expanding on proven clean energy technologies like solar, wind, hydro, biomass, geothermal, as well as working on the future of some of the hydrogen or the carbon capture sequestration. But just on the proven clean energy technologies doesn't get where we need to be by 2030 to be there by net zero. These two pillars will get us up to the 90% where we need to be. So that's where we are focusing really on the third area that's really on working on piloting and scaling up the new energy technologies, clean energy technologies, that is virtual power plants or the vehicle to grid uh, or the demand flexibility. And on the grid scale technologies and the new emerging technologies perspective, we are looking into that hydrogen and the carbon capture sequestration. They're, they're there from a scalability and cost also, we take that into the consideration because those are the two guardrails for us. One is the affordability and the another one is the reliability. And this is where we are working with partners in terms of um, developing and advancing some of these um, emerging smart grid technologies to support the grid that is reliable and efficient. And the fourth area is the financial aspect. Again, this is where we are very much laser focused on achieving this zero carbon plan that comes with a reasonable cost so that we can limit the rate increases for our customers. So we are a not-for-profit, we are a community owned, so we take pride in that. So we want to provide that clean energy transition, but not at any cost. So, it's, so we want to limit the rate impacts to not to exceed the annual rate of inflation. So how do we do about it? This is where we are pursuing the grants uh, and the partnerships. From the behind the meter perspective, it is the EVs, PVs, and the battery storage. This is where we're working with Aspen Tech in terms of developing, enhancing the DERMS functionality. That's part of the scope of this proposal with the Department of Energy as well. And we are working with Calpine Energy for an another $100 million grant um, in terms of the carbon capture sequestration um, project. Then the fifth area is, that is the foundation, and it is really to how do we maximize our community benefits, really to improve the local air quality and the health of the overall health of the community in our local and the regional area, at the same time creating some of the clean tech jobs 
and to support the some of the disadvantaged communities as well. You know, so Rich, you're you're undergoing some some very profound changes uh, within your your organization, and with change comes challenges. Definitely. So it, it it begs to ask the question that in order to meet those challenges, resolve some of those those complexities, whatever they might be. First of all, spell out the complexities for us, please, and then give us a color of, of how you're partnering with Aspen Tech to achieve some of those objectives. The most dynamic transformation change is happening on the distribution grid. It is very transformative change in terms of it is becoming very complex and the dynamic, and we need have a better tools to manage the grid reliably and economically that's where really Aspen Tech comes into the play because with the proliferation of the distributed energy resources, the adoption of the EVs and the PVs and the battery storage, customers have the resources and we want them to be part of the journey. And we implemented ADMS, Advanced Distribution Management System, which gives the top-down view of the grid from a SCADA level and we have all the smart meters, the data comes in it and millions of the data points that we want to feed it into the ADMS to get a better visibility of the system from a load profiles perspective. So now we are implementing the next generation smart meters as well. And this is where we are working with Aspen Tech and the iTron in terms of the three-way partnership to bring this smart meter data, more near real-time data, five-minute interval data that is feeding into make it better the distribution power flow, switch order management. So really the tools that the distribution operators and the distribution engineers are needed is that's what we are working with Aspen Tech. To me, it comes across that that all the cross uh, solutions that, that you are deploying, they're heavily digitally premised. So, so as a technologist, it begs to ask you a macro question that if you see, see the approaching horizon, how big a role is digitalization going to play for your company? I think digitalization is very is going to play a very important and a key role in this clean energy transition. The distributed intelligence, of course, there are still a lot of challenges in terms of interoperability, especially the equipment that comes from different manufacturers, whether it is the EVs or the inverters or the batteries, they need to talk to each other. So, Without that, it would be the standards and the interoperability standards creates a, a little bit of a challenge, but considering we are working with all the equipment manufacturers and we will eventually we get there. But that's where, if we have an ecosystem that works across with all these behind the meter DERs, you can push that intelligence to the edge to make the decision making because you can avoid all this overload or the back feed of the energy that is coming back or with the demand. So you can have that orchestrate the DERs better, especially from the behind the meter DERs with the digitalization. And that's where the great opportunity is. And that's where we are working. One of them is with the Aspen Tech's DERMS solution. Uh, but the digital age also brings its own unique set of, set of challenges. You're a company in transformation. So perhaps it could, could you sum up some of the, the, the volatility and the challenges specific, specific to SMUD that, that you're facing that, that perhaps are always at the back of your mind as CIO? There are multiple aspects of the challenges, like one I talked about it in terms of the, the interoperability standards or the technology not being there. This is where the partnership and the co-innovation and the people with, you have to partner with the people that have the common vision and the mission to get to there where we want to be. One being the technology readiness and we being the little bit of a bleeding edge in certain, some areas. And of course, there are, there are other utilities also, but at the same time, at what cost you want to do. And the other aspect definitely with any of the technology perspective is you need to consider from a cybersecurity perspective is what kind of a threat vectors that will be there. And the third is the organizational change management because traditionally we are all comfortable with a one-way power flow, but without you don't have a choice. And now we are having this bi-directional power coming into the play. It's the two-way distribution grid or bi-directional distribution grid you have to engage and you educate customers. Customers are not just like the consumers now, now they are the producers also. But in this equation, previously it is a centralized generation, now it is all the distributed generation. 
there is a great opportunity and there are a lot of challenges as i said but with all these challenges comes with opportunities so how do you better orchestrate all these things take advantage and make the customers and community part of this journey that's where a lot of change management within the organization within the community how do you educate at the same time from a policies perspective also we want to work with the regulators and the policy um developers in terms of um, what are the standards that we would like to see and where is the flexibility that we want to because we don't want to be very rigid on that will makes it very hard to implement some of these um, systems if you look at some of the the solutions you brought to brought to bear we've spoken about some of the the deployments that that you've done done with with Aspen Tech we look at your ambition you look we look at you as as a cooperative i may say so in in, in transition you're using natural gas as a bridging fuel and you're switching on to uh more renewable sources of uh, source of energy so in summation you are actually aspiring to perhaps build a grid for the future now that then begs the question does it require you to completely reorient or readjust your business model fundamentally there is there won't be change at, because at the end of the day we've been formed to serve the sacramento community and that provide the reliable and power at an affordable cost so that's that doesn't change but there are a lot of operational how we used to traditionally operate our the flow from a generation transmission distribution to considering really the changes on the distribution side that's where really we are investing in terms of the change management both on the people side as well as on the technology and bringing the customers there is a lot of expectations from the customers customers want to be part of this journey they invest in this distributed energy resources on the especially on the ev and pv so how do we maximize and how do we make incorporate them as part of the journey rather than previously the shift in the business model perspective is we may be considering them previously just as a customers or a consumers now they are the partners of this journey so when we say partnership it's not only the partnership with the vendors or the strategic players it's the partnership with our customers as well now comes into play that's a little bit of a shift in the business operating model now if we go right down to the core the 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 essence of uh, of your utility company we we look at new systems and new technologies what uh, where would these new systems or technologies be be brought to bear when we're looking at uh, you know control rooms of utilities such as yourself uh, in the not too distant future traditionally we have two control centers one is more on the generation transmission what we call the pso power system operators and the distribution level is the distribution system operators the two two controls two separate control rooms and control centers i see more and more change in the dso side on the distribution system operators because they have to maneuver a lot of levers to manage the distribution grid very reliable and efficient that's where some opportunity comes from then a reliability dispatch or an economic dispatch because there are the resources that are available will we start with an ai ai and ml we use today because we have the smart meters and we have millions of data points that we collect every day that we use from a more on the back end from an artificial intelligence or the machine learning perspective but the generative ai or pushing the decision making to the edge is where a little bit of going into the future so that releases the burden on the dso of course you as we have to always consider because from a threat vectors perspective the cyber security and how much automation you want to do how much modeling we can get better at it and what tools we can give it but really is going to be the the dynamic and the complex and that's where that control center is going to be a living breathing place for the dso side the kernel the true kernel of your your plants and and if you if you, if you look at it to to round up this 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 very fascinating conversation uh, i'd like to ask you that the, given the 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 backdrop the context you have provided of 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 what challenges control rooms face where do you see your your partnership with aspen tech in in that context from a, from a range of solutions from from cyber security all the way to grid management as uh, especially from the grid management of course cyber security nowadays is an integral part of everything that we do because we cannot take it granted on everything that especially from a reliability when we say reliability that is very serious and safety and reliability are the topmost for any utility company so we we take it grant we make sure the cyber security is the ticket to play to begin with to start with and the from a grid management perspective as today it is not there there are a lot of players 
everyone says, hey, we can do this DER management, but that's more focused on a particular type of a DER type, maybe, okay, I can manage all your EVs, or I can manage your all the batteries, or I can manage, one can manage their the th thermostats and all. But bringing all of these things together to provide that a holistic picture where you lay it on top of your distribution model, and that's where the great opportunity, and that's where we see from our reference architecture or our roadmap perspective, we hope Aspen Tech will get there. And that's where we look at from the digital grid management or the Aspen Tech solutions, there's a great opportunity. And that's our vision, and that's how we partner with them to co-innovate to get to the where we want to be. So if that was a fascinating conversation. We really appreciate your insight. Many thanks for your time. Sure, my pleasure. That was Suresh Kota, Chief Information Officer at SMAD.